Alright, this video is for your semester two exam review unit eight questions. These are all no calculator allowed questions. And they're just talking about quadratic, vertex form, and transformation. Alright, so the first problem, we are given a quadratic negative x minus 4 squared plus 4. That's in vertex form. And we're going to graph it and find the features of this graph. Now remember, the turning point of a quadratic, in fact, in uh, vertex form, takes the opposite for the x value of the term in the parentheses, so here positive 4, and the same as the y value. That's your turning point, 4, 4. You can plot that on your graph. Now, we want to know, is this a maximum or minimum? So I look out in front of the equation. There's a negative out in front, which means my graph's going to open down. It means that my graph is going to have a maximum. The axis of symmetry is the invisible line that cuts through the middle of your graph. Right? So it's going to cut right through here. That equation is always x equals, because it's an invisible vertical line, and it equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now let's talk about the y-intercept. A long time ago we did these y-intercepts, and we had to find them without a calculator. Well, the y-intercept occurs where x equals 0. So we're going to put 0 in for x in this equation. So I would have negative, negative 4 squared plus 4. Now, negative 4 squared is positive 16, but I have a negative in front of that, which is negative 16 plus 4, which is negative 12. Your y-intercept is at 0, negative 12 which makes sense because my graph is going to be opening upside down. You'll see in a minute why that will make sense. All right, let's talk about domain and range once we graph the equation. The zeros, there are two ways to find the zero. You can either graph your equation using the pattern from the squared function that you know, or the zeros happen when the y value equals zero. So the x y intercepts happen when x equals zero. The roots happen when y equals zero. So you could set the equation equal to 0 here and take negative x minus 4 squared plus 4 and solve that equation for x. So you'd have to subtract 4 from both sides, divide by negative 1, extend the page. Alright, then we would take the square root. It looks like a lot of work, but it's not too bad. Plus or minus 2, don't forget plus or minus, so you take the square root here, and then add 4 to both sides. So your solutions would be 4 plus or minus 2. Well, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 4 minus 2 is 2, so that's where your roots would be. Let's see if that makes sense. Let's graph our quadratic. We're going to use the parent function, which means that we're going to go out 1, down 1. Up two from the vertex down four, which oh look happens to be the vert the x intercept at six and two, which is what we wanted. Out three, down nine. And then if I go out four, I have to go down sixteen, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen would be at negative twelve, which is right around where we said the y intercept should be. So there is our parabola. Now the domain. Domain goes left to right. The left and right of my graph has arrows on it. So my domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. The range goes bottom to top. The bottom of my graph is from negative infinity. It goes up to the highest y value on my graph, which is at 4. Inclusive, so there's a square bracket. All right? Should be able to do all those features without your calculator. Number two, let's talk about transformation. You have to know what all these numbers and all the signs do to the graph. When there's a 2 or a value out in front as a leading coefficient, that is a vertical stretch or compression. 2 is greater than 1, so it is a vertical stretch. I'm going to abbreviate by a factor of 2. The negative 8 on the inside of the parentheses. Remember, inside the parentheses is the opposite of what you think is going to happen. So when I have a negative 8 on the inside, you're moving right 8. And then the plus 9 on the outside does exactly what you think. It's going to move the graph up 9. The bottom equation, the one half out in front, is a vertical compression by a half. It's a compression because one half is less than one. 
the negative in front of the x inside is a reflection over the y-axis. We'll talk about x-axis in a minute. And the minus 2 on the end means your graph is going to go down 2. So you should be able to list and identify what transformation is occurring based on the graph. Finally, number 3 for this unit, you're going to be given transformations and have to write the equation. So reflect over the y-axis, just like the last problem. That means the negative is going to be in front of the x, inside. Oops, I'll come back to that. So parentheses here, a negative, and an x. A vertical stretch by 5 means that I'm going to have a whole number 5 out in front of the parentheses. A horizontal stretch by 3, well, horizontal stretch actually goes in the parentheses in front of the x. And when I have a horizontal stretch, remember, you take the reciprocal of 3, which is 1 third. So I'm going to have a negative 1 third x in the parentheses because that's the reflecting over the y plus the horizontal stretch. I have to have my quantity squared. And up 7 units is a plus 7 on the x. B is a little bit easier. I have a vertical compression by 1 fourth. So we start our equation with a 1 fourth. Reflecting over the x-axis is a negative in front of the entire equation. And left happens inside the parentheses. Left is a plus 4. And you square the quantity. So that would be your equation. All right, that's Unit 8. If you have any other questions, check the key on Canvas or ask your teacher for some help.